Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we take a look at a uh, creepypasta simply titled, A Snuff Game. Now sit back and enjoy this snuff game. I don't normally enjoy playing Facebook games, but a few months ago, one caught my attention. I was extremely bored and there was a game being advertised on my Facebook page. The game was titled Super Sniper 2.0. And the ad was a picture of some kind of sharpshooter, with some tagline I don't remember. I wasn't expecting it to be very good, but like I said, I was pretty bored, so I clicked on the ad. I was redirected to another website for a development company titled Twisted Gaming. The company logo appeared to be a red skull with horns. The site was a very plain, uh, it had no fancy pictures, screenshots of the game or anything, not even any Google ads. It, it just said, Welcome to Twisted Gaming. You are hereby invited to participate in the official online beta test for our new game, Super Sniper 2.0. We are currently testing a new technology that we hope will propel role-playing games into the next generation. We hope you enjoy playing. At the bottom of the page, there was a link saying play now, so I clicked it. As the game was loading, I was treated to a text screen detailing the plot. The plot was a very simple and typical of independent RPG. Some strange disease had broken out in a small midwestern town and in the middle of nowhere turning all the victims into zombie-like creatures that would spread the disease by biting other people and also turning them into zombies. The virus had eventually overtaken all the residents of the town, and as the hero, the player was to dispatch them all using a sniper rifle. The game loaded, and I was left looking through the crosshairs of a sniper rifle. At the top, there was red text that said, Camera 1, Level 1. In the upper left-hand corner, there was a map of the uh, town. All around the town, there were red triangles that were marked Camera 2 through Camera 10. In the bottom right hand corner of the screen there was the options menu. I clicked it, then clicked controls. The mouse was used to turn the scope, the arrow buttons were for zooming, and I would use the spacebar to fire. Shift Q would let me switch among different kinds of ammunition. The left and right arrow buttons would cycle through the different types of uh, ammunition, and the left and right arrows combined with the shift key would cycle through the cameras. I zoomed into the town. It looked like an old Route 66 town, you know, with one road running through it. The graphics were nothing spectacular, but as I zoomed onto my first target, I noticed something striking. The body of the target was very realistic. The face in particular was exquisitely detailed, and the facial expressions being extremely well animated. I couldn't believe how much detail they had put into the target, but most unusual was the expression. It was one of fear. It's as if the target knew he was about to be executed. I took the shot, and there was a slight lag between the sound of the shot and the trace of the bullet. It's a little annoying. The target must have heard the report, so, you know, he took off. I saw a couple other targets running away as well. Like their faces, their running movements were also very well animated and realistic. The game was also sp uh, the game was going to be a lot harder than I even thought. I couldn't spot any more enemies on the uh, side of the town, so I clicked on camera 10, you know, the opposite side. I saw another target, a woman this time. She had the same level of detail and the same terrified expression. She also started to run after I took the shot, but it was too late. The round struck her in the left shoulder blade, and she fell down. There was no blood, but for some reason the place where I had shot her had glitched out and become transparent. Then more of her started disappearing until I could see that almost, you know, almost through all of her backside. She was crawling, struggling to get away, and though I couldn't put my finger on it, her struggling and distress was somehow also very realistically animated. It was even a little sickening, so I finished her off with another round. But even this wasn't enough at first, she continued to breathe and have these nerve spasms. Looks like Twisted Games really was set on making the targets as realistic as possible. Twisted. A couple seconds later, she finally died and a picture came up on the screen that said Kill Cam at the top. The picture was of a dead, bloodied woman in a white outfit. It was very realistic, in fact, it did just look like a photograph. After a second or so, it just disappeared. I was a little disturbed, but I kept playing. Each of the targets had the same level of realism, and each of them ran away you know, every time I fired. Eventually I discovered that I had the option of going full auto to make strafing runs, which made it a whole lot easier. Each time I killed a target, the part where I shot them disappeared. Each time, I got, a, I got another grizzly kill cam photo, and each subject had the same white uniform. Eventually, I noticed something that was a little more disturbing. Each of the photos appeared to be taken in a real-life version of the town, in the same spot where I'd killed the target. After dispatching all the enemies, I was taken to level 2. The level was much different. This time, all I had to do was fly a drone over a lab where a terrorist organization was making the zombie virus and bombing it. After completing the objective, I was greeted with another kill cam image, but this time, it was a video. Well, one of a burning building. I could even hear men shouting in a foreign language, and I even thought I saw a couple. For level 3, I was returned to the town. The first target I saw looked like a little girl. I was appalled they'd include this in the game, so I decided to skip that target. 
The next target took a while to find. He was hiding behind what looked like two fuel tanks that were there for some reason. I tried shooting at them, but couldn't get a hit. Then I switched to incendiary rounds and blew up one of the tanks. As he ran on fire, his entire body disappeared in midair. Mid -air. The kill cam photo showed a completely charred body, with two exploded fuel tanks behind it. Up until now, I'd hoped and assumed that this had been some kind of elaborate act. But after killing another enemy, I noticed something else. A white uniform that all the targets were uh, wearing in the kill cam photos, well, you know that technology they use in movies like the Polar Express and the Lord of the Rings trilogy for Gollum? You know, that CGI stuff? Well, the next day there was a report on the news of a drone strike on a building in Iran, which killed several civilians. You can see why I wish to remain anonymous. Well, that was a snuff game, ladies and gents, and holy hell, that is something. Now, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from a game with, you know, from Facebook, out of all places, titled Super Sniper 2.0. Honestly, I was expecting this to be, you know, pure shit pasta material. But it wasn't all bad, be, you know, it is pretty much your standard mindfuck pasta with that twist near the end. It had a, you know, nice pacing, it had good build-up. You know, and although I did actually want more because it was shorter, I wanted more because, man, that ending did give me that whole Polybius vibe. And if you remember, you know, something that I said a long time ago in my Polybius Revisited video is that these games could be like trainers for us all, you know what I mean? Like, they, they could just, it could be something that trains us for, you know, any kind of those shooters or, you know, when you're playing an F2P game free to play. Maybe you're actually training for something. Maybe you're doing something like this. I don't know. You know, it it sounds really stupid. Trust me, from a realistic stand of from a realistic standpoint, when you're looking at it, it it's a very stupid plausibility. And but when but you, you gotta take realism out for a minute, and you just gotta look at a possibility in the future. It is chilling a killer with no remorse because they have no idea what's going on in the first place. It's actually a very chilling concept when you think about it, and it again can be very plausible. Maybe in the near future through social media. And with a lack of proper media coverage in those areas due to such uh, due to the hostility of the environment, we never really know if it could be real or not. Again, I'm not going to go super tinfoil, you know, hat mode, but it is a creepy concept to think about. And again, that's what a creepy pasta is supposed to do. It sort of make you think chillingly to the concept that you're, uh, you know, looking at. I guess, and it's, you know, some private agency using you as a drone operator performing atrocities through the guise of a Facebook game. Could you give that page a like? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but in the end, uh, you know, please don't turn this into a political warfare in the comments below. Just, you know, think about the concept itself and the story. It wasn't a bad tale. It was a little too quick for me. And, you know, I wanted to be a tad longer having those photograph moments with the people dying. Yeah, it's a little kind of cliched. But when you look at it as a whole package, it does bring out that, you know, eerie vibe. And again, that's what a career pasta should really do. It's engaging and I enjoyed it. So, what would you rate this and what would you change to make it better? This has been another episode of Twisted, sorry, I mean Haunted Gaming. I almost got that confused there. <laughs> and if you like what you saw, then rate, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.